So where does this leave Australia? We crossed to New York earlier to speak to Trade Minister Stephen Chobo. Minister, thank you so much for giving us your time. Now, you've been hopeful of reviving or being able to rescue the Trans-Pacific Partnership, but what's the reality now? Do you accept that it's finished? Well, no. What uh, The conversations that I've been having have been about a reformulated TPP, uh, what we could call a TPP 12 minus 1. In other words, the opportunity to capture the gains that we've been able to secure under the agreement of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, but less the United States. There's still an appetite from a number of countries, including Canada, Mexico, uh, New Zealand, Singapore and others, to look at what we could be able to come up with that would still capture those important gains around trade facilitation and uh, the efficiencies uh, for small business, etc., uh, but do it within that TPP framework. Well, let's look at the appetite for those to stay in. Take Japan, for example. It's the biggest economy now left in the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Shinzo Abe has said that without the United States that the deal has no value. Malaysia and Vietnam, other countries that have said that they would look at getting out as well. How can you be sure that it would be able to survive? Well, I think things have moved on. Um, the fact is that I've had conversations over this past week with trade ministers from, as I indicated, Canada, Mexico. Stan, it comes down to this. I mean, from Australia's perspective, we already have a free trade agreement with the United States. Under the TPP, we'd be able to have access to markets that we don't have a trade agreement with, including, for example, Canada and Mexico. So, of course, it's very much in Australia's interests to be able to capitalise on the gains that we've made. Never forget, this is about benefiting small and medium-sized businesses. I mean, the big guys can always hire in the expertise. They can hire in the lawyers. They can hire in the people they need to facilitate trade. But those Aussie businesses, those small to medium enterprises, they're the ones that benefit from having one set of rules that apply across 11 or 12 countries, uh, and they're the ones who stand to gain the most. But, Minister, the Trans-Pacific Partnership was not just a trade deal, was it? There was a geopolitical element to this. Part of it was being able to contain China to be able to reassert America's role in the Asia-Pacific. What message does this now send to the region under a Trump presidency, the role that America will continue to play? Well, Sam, I think you're sort of inviting me to provide commentary on um, what the decisions and implications of the United States will mean with respect to China and Asia more generally. And um, I, of course, am, am not going to do that. Uh, what I'm focused on is pursuing our national interests. What I'm focused on is pursuing uh, good outcomes for Australian workers, good outcomes for Australian exporters, uh, preferential market access of the type that the coalition has already delivered into important North, Ameri uh, North Asian markets like China, Japan and Korea. So is that the message now that we take away from this, that Donald Trump is saying he's going to put America first, that other countries need to put themselves first? Is that really a healthy way for the international community to act? Well, look, I always uh, think we should exercise caution about the way in which we phrase things. Um, of course, as Australia's Trade Minister and Trade Ministers before me, we'll always put Australians first. That is the whole reason why you do a deal. But the reason I talk about exercising caution is because, you know, I, I want to eject, uh, reject emphatically this notion that trade deals are about winners and losers. That's not how it works. Good trade deals are about producing win-win outcomes. It's about opportunities to grow the trade pie. It's about opportunities to get more Australian goods overseas. And, uh, you know, we have seen big increases in Australian export volumes. We've, in fact, seen last year uh, a lot of Australia's growth being underpinned by enhanced market access. And, Stan, this is the reason why we've got to stay focused on building these opportunities for more trade for Australia. And it's part of the reason why I'm so concerned, frankly, that Bill Shorten has been so weak and willing to walk away from the TPP when it requires, frankly, a little bit of elbow grease. OK, I'll come to domestic politics in, in just a moment, but I want to focus also on China. China is crucial here. China was left out of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Does this now open the way for China to play a bigger role? Well, China is Australia's largest trading partner. Uh, we've got two-way trade worth roughly $155 billion. We run a good trade surplus with China, uh, and that's a big positive for our country. Uh, what China decides to do is ultimately, of course, a decision for China. 
Uh, from Australia's perspective, I'm going to continue to open market access. We're in negotiations right now with Indonesia, and I hope to conclude a trade agreement with Indonesia this year. I'm also having conversations, uh, and we hope to formally commence negotiations on a free trade agreement uh, with um, the European Union around the middle of this year, conversations with the UK, conversations with India that are ongoing. So we've got a number of pokers in the fire, uh, and these are all good outcomes for Australia. Just finally, you've said that you would leave the door open to ratifying the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Are you going to proceed with that? Well, I'm certainly going to keep that option alive because we need to see the way in which discussion will go now between the other 11 countries in the TPP. Um, I want to, you know, basically get Bill Short and the Labor Party to have a bit more backbone when it comes to trade. Um, we've seen in the past Bill Short and the Labor Party go to water uh, at the request of their puppet masters, the trade union movement, on the China-Australia Free Trade Agreement. And never forget, Stan, that that China-Australia Free Trade Agreement has seen record volumes of exports from Australia and we potentially would have lost it if Labor had not had lost their nerve. Um, they're losing their nerve now on this issue as well and that's not good for Australian exporters, it's not good for Australian jobs uh, and we need to make sure that the uh, Labor Party have a bit more of a stiff backbone about these sorts of issues. Minister, thank you again for your time. Pleasure, thanks Dan.